Hey my friends, it's time for another picture package here on the ranch. You might be wondering like, Milner, what's it like on the ranch? So before we get to this picture package, I'm just gonna share with you what an average Tuesday sounds like on my patio. <laughs> Okay, welcome back, you you jackals, you photo jackals. I realize now that there's an insatiable appetite that is impossible for me to quell. An insatiable appetite for my photographs because they're just so outstanding. And um, some of you out there are probably lighting candles, maybe building shrines to my photographs, and I think you should because they're so, they're so, so good. Uh, if you could only see the tangle of cables in front of me, you wouldn't feel, you wouldn't feel like I was in control at all. And the fact that I'm using five computers, if you throw in my phone, uh, which I don't, so let's call it an even four. Four computers. I did get my new laptop. And oh, by the way, a let's say a 40-minute 1080 film on the old computer was a 45-minute export. That same film on the new computer is a three-minute export. So yeah, I would call that a, a, an upgrade. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, images here. We're doing a picture package. I'm going to show you a bunch of images, and then we're going to narrow it down, and we're going to solidify. We're going to, we're going to consolidate on one final sequence of these images. But before we do that, I need to mention that the images that we're going to be looking at today were all made with the Hasselblad. This was during a part of my life when I was using the Hasselblad almost exclusively, and uh, I was using it for both my portrait wedding life and I was using it for my commercial editorial documentary life, believe it or not. And uh, back in the 90s, I saw a couple of photographers that I really respected, at least as photographers. I wouldn't say I necessarily respected them as much as human, as human beings, but their photography was really good. And they were doing like reportage with uh, squares. And um, I was like, wow, that's interesting. They were doing global news events with square format, whether it was the Blod or the Mamiya 6. And I was like, oh, I think I like that. I like the look of that. It, it, it solves the horizontal landscape question. Just shoot square, baby. And so I got a Hasselblad. But let me tell you the history here of this, uh, how I got this camera. When Hasselblads were hot, I was living in Los Angeles, and I had left Kodak Professional, and I was freelancing um, as a photographer. And I had no money. I was mostly free little Lance. And Hasselblads were so expensive. And I knew the Hasselblad rep, Susie. She was awesome. Susie was so nice to me and was so cool. But she never gave me a camera. Like there was never even a glimmer, a crack in that door of like, be cool, kid, and I'll get you one of these. No, there was never, that was never tabled at all. And every time I'd go to an event where Hasselblad was there, she was there. And Hasselblad was introducing new stuff all the time. She'd be like, oh, that 500 CM you wanted, guess what? Now, you, now it comes in bright yellow or navy blue. And I'd be like, yeah, I, I, I want that. And bodies were like $5,000 a piece. And then you had to get lenses. And the lenses were another like 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 5,000. And I was like, I do not have the money to buy this. And so I didn't buy a Hasselblad. I didn't get it. So fast forward a couple of years, and the great digital revolution has come. Mao has come to the country in the form of the censor, and everybody has lost their mind. They are running at this blindly. It's like uh, it's in Quigley Down Under where they're driving the you know local folks over the cliff. It's horrifying watching this happen, and I'm watching everybody run at the digital revolution literally blindly to what it is, what it means, what it costs, the lifestyle change, everything. The flip side of that for someone like myself was that suddenly the market was flooded with, with medium format cameras and 35 millimeter film cameras for that matter, but medium format, just deluge, the great deluge to steal a term from Doug Brinkley. And I went to, uh, started looking and I bought, get this, I bought a Hasselblad body with a back, 
with a waist level finder and an 80 millimeter f2.8 lens for a grand total of $65. $65. I started using it immediately for my commercial work and I just fell in love with it. I was like, this is my favorite camera, medium format camera of all time. And I love the square. And so I bought a second body, which was um, a 503 CW, which would take a digital back and another back and another finder and 120 millimeter lens. And I paid 500 bucks for all of that, the lens and the body and the finder and the back. So I was locked and loaded. I ended up giving away the original one. I used the original one, the $65 Hasselblad. I used it as my primary commercial camera for 10 years. So all of the portrait weddings I did, all of the documentary stuff, everything I did with Square was with that $65 camera. And I paid it forward. When a young photographer came along and was hungry and trying to get into the industry, I said, you know what, I'm going to give this camera away. So I did. I also gave away two Nikon F6s and all the lenses for those as well because I figured, you know what, somebody's going to put this to good use. Somebody will do something good with it because I am a photo martyr if you haven't figured this out. So let's talk about these images. This is my nephew came in, and uh, I'm going to show you a couple images here first. These two. These two images right here. Portrait, action shot. Portrait, action shot. Now, this portrait, let me get my, my tool here. I Whoa, check that out. I like this portrait a lot. I think it's really simple. I love how the black borders sort of even. I love this, this sort of feel here. I love the fact that each side of the frame is anchored by his little shoulders. I love the fact that he's got his shirt in his mouth. I love how smooth and perfect his skin is. You know, it shows the age. I love the little tufts of hair coming out from underneath his hat. I love the black up here and the black down here. I like this portrait. It's simple, but it's a real moment. I didn't tell him to do this. I was just shadowing him and he did it. He's lost in his in thought. God knows what a kid this age is thinking. It's horrible, whatever it is. A boy this age, whatever he's thinking, will terrorize the rest of the population, trust me. But I like this a lot. And this is a picture that parents like, right? My brother, his wife, they would like this picture. This is a little bit more of my picture, right? He's, I'm laying down on the ground. He is jumping off of something over the top of me. The focus is actually up here on the sky. So he's purposely soft. And what I'm looking for is just a dramatic form, a dramatic shape. And I'm looking for a moment, something that's going to be here now and gone in the next second, which I got. So I like these. But here's the thing. We're now going into a second batch of images, same kid, different event. So he's a bio, I raced BMX, my brother raced BMX, he raced BMX. And so this is a series of images that are at a BMX track. <clears throat> now you'll also notice that these are toned, warm tone. And I've done potentially the single worst toning job in the history of photography. So you'll see this one is toned one way, this one is another way, this one's another way. And let me just go through these really quickly. So these are the images in the, in the sequence, right? So now I've got two distinctively different style of, of shoots. I've got this shoot and I've got this shoot. They don't play well together. This is not, you can't combine those kind of shoots. I just don't think it works. So let's, let me look at these. This image I really like. He's got an incredibly engaging uh, look on his face. He is not posing He's looking dead center at the lens. Actually, he's looking at the top of my head because I'm, I'm using a waist level finder. But I really like this. I do not like this. But I come from the tradition that you do not move objects, either physically in the frame yourself or by the computer afterwards. You don't do that. That's a big no-no. It's, it's a slippery slope, and I just do not manipulate stuff. So I have to live with that. And this was sort of a quick grab shot. He's mentally getting into the frame of mind where he needs to be to actually start racing. So here we have him next at the starting line. And I've blown the focus a little bit. The focus is actually right here on this rear tire. So I blew it. It should be right here. But it's darn close. And that negative's good enough to where I could still use this picture. And he's trying to pull up his pants, which I think is hilarious because all, oh, look at these runts. Look at these scrawny little kids out racing bikes. They're, everything's hanging off of them. The helmet looks like it's 14 sizes too big. I love this. It's a period, a period in time in his life that will be gone very quickly. This is a picture, uh, again, in the same series, all shot within the same few moments. This is either before or after the race. It might be before because he looks really perturbed with me. He looks like he just wants to take me out in the countryside and bleed me slowly out there. 
Uh, it, this is a simple picture. The reason it works is the fall off of these Hasselblad lenses and the medium format is very dramatic. It's very smooth and nice, even though this is a garish looking, horrible looking tarp thingy on the edge of the track. It's not that distracting. I love these um, dynamic element lines that are coming in here. It, li it literally is pointing you directly at his face. So there is a redeeming factor to this picture. But it's simple. This is a parent picture. Parents love it. I also love the fact that his number got crossed out, and his number is a paper plate. And for any of you who are my age who raced BMX, this is what we did. There were no fancy name plates. There were no nothing. Everything was done by hand, and it was awful and slow and made us feel like we were going to slide back into the, into the primordial ooze. This is the gem of the night, in my opinion. This is the best picture I made that night, which are the guy's long exposure, neutral density filter, the kids getting, anytime there's BMX races going on, over the crest of this hill is the starting gate. And so behind the crest of the hill is line after line after line of kids on bikes who are all going to race each other. They all get information based on age or, or, or skill level or whatever, however they rank them. And so this is like kids slowly making their way up to the starting line. I like this picture a lot. I think this is a decent square format reportage picture. I think this is interesting. This is going to come into play later. These are, are uh, just a long exposure of the street of the lights over the track, and those are all bugs. All these little small things are, are bugs in the, uh, in the lights. This is giving me a little bit of atmospheric perspective. This, again, parent shot. This is basic. The light is nice. The light on his face is nice. I've got a semi sort of quarter angle backlit frame. The exposure is dead on. The fall off of the lens is nice. Uh, it's got a little bit, you know, foreground. There's a little mid ground here, a little background here. I don't mind this little bit of sky to separate uh, the background here. I think this is a, a very standard, basic, simple photograph that is about knowing where to pose someone in the light. Had I moved 50 feet to my right and shot back with him in direct sunlight, it would have looked like crap because the light's too harsh. But, but a quarter backlit, it works. And that's about learning to read light. This is the number one thing you have to do as a photographer is you are always looking for the light that you can work in. And if it's not there, you basically are not going to be able to make, make the kind of pictures you need to make. And that's just a sad reality, which is why it pays to get up early and stay up late. So, but this picture is boring. Like, he, look at him. He's just, again, he wants to take me out in the country and just leave me for dead. You can tell. He's a punk. He's a total punk. The parents probably love this shot. Me, I'm bored with it. So let's move on. These two images together do not fit the rest of these. So don't even try to blend them together into some picture package. It doesn't work. I put them in there as a trick, a trap to get some of you thinking, oh, I could put these together. You can't. Not only do they, it's just a very different looking, feeling, shoot scene, the toning is not right either. So the tone doesn't match, and it just kind of infuriates me. However, these two together, I really like. I think this is a nice diptych. It's, it's a picture for them and a picture for me, and they're blend together. Now, I would use a black background here so that this image doesn't fade into the background, but I think this is a solid diptych. So that's just part A of our, of our evening. Let's move on to the real nitty gritty. That's, let's move on to what you're here for. Let's cut, let's cut this crap down. So I've already narrowed from seven images to six. I've taken out this one, right? It's nothing wrong with it. Mom's happy. Mom's going to put this on her phone, going to put it on Instagram, going to put it on Facebook, going to put it on Pinterest and Twitter and TikTok and Nick Knock and, and Dingbat and whatever else that mom is on. This is going to end up on there. But this is where I start moving the pieces of the puzzle around and realize, okay, my toning job on this image is, is, is horrible. It looks like I poured ketchup on the negative. But anyway, play along. The rest of these look pretty fine. But there's too many here. There's too many rep repetitive things happening. This image and this image and this image are too repetitive. I don't need three of those. I need one of those. And this image and this image could be repetitive, but I don't think they are because one's abstract enough to deal. And then I've got a little atmospheric situation happening here. So let's go from here to, let's go to the third one. Boom. So I've already now eliminated those others. I have took out the two other portraits and I just left this one because to me, this is the strongest image right here. The strongest portrait image. I really, I like this picture a lot. It's honest picture. A little action, 
starting gate, I think I need that. I kind of think I need it. I also like the fact that he's looking, and let me make this a little, make this a little bigger. I think he, the fact that he's looking this way is helpful, but I don't think this is in the right place. I think it's, it's out of place. This, I love atmospheric, just, just for fun. But these, don't get me wrong, this one, this one, and this one are the three, the meat and the potatoes of this. Steak, baked potato, and a salad. But these are in the wrong order. And I'm going to go here to the fourth one. Now we're getting a little closer. I'm going to lead with this. This tells you everything you need to know. This kid is racing something. He's got a helmet on. He's got his little super cool jersey with shoulder pads on, which we did not have as kids. When I was racing, we wore T-shirts, work boots, and my brother's motorcycle helmet. And we got hurt all the time. Huh, go figure. This is really the lead. This is my favorite picture of the evening. It's abstract. It might be a bit too much to follow this first image with this one. This pretty basic kid on the starting line. You see the track out in front of him. These guys are racing bicycles. Everything is self-explanatory. And then a little Milner atmospheric over here. But this, fe this does not feel like it's in the right order. This feels potentially like it's in the right order. Lead with this. Starting gate. He's looking over here to the other kids coming behind him and then a little bit of atmospheric here at the end. Now, you could flip-flop these two. You could move this atmospheric shot into the middle, and that could work as well. Those are typically what I would, maybe I would do that. And again, when it comes to picture packages, it's pretty subjective on how this works. I think there's obviously a few things that come into play where, like for me making a decision, this is the picture I want to lead with. Um, you could turn this completely upside down. You could lead with this image. It'd be super cool abstract. But remember, if you're looking at this in sequential form, let's say that this is in book form or zine form or print form, and you lead with this image, you're going to lose a lot of people. You're going to lose a lot of people who look at this down here and say, why is that out of focus? That's it. Believe it or not. These are not, people do not look at photographs like we do. Whereas if you lead with this, it's a, it's a dead ringer. You've got the subject mat, subject is having direct eye contact with the photographer. It's very simple. It's a child in a helmet who's racing something. This explains a lot. Look at the covers of the National Geographic. They are always very basic, powerful, simple reads. They are not uberly visually complex. And photographers who shoot uber visually complex work, especially in like news environments, that, that plays for the galleries and the museums and the collectors and other photographers, but it doesn't with the public, which is why so many of those publications have gone away, is that that work to you and I looks great. And to the public, they go, why is this frame tilted? Why is this out of focus? Why? That, they'd look at it in much more meat and potato terms. So this is a very safe trajectory of how these would play. And that's why I'm putting them in this order for you, because I want you all to be safe. You know, I want the best for you. I don't want there to be any kind of nefarious activity. Um, and when I think of nefarious activity, I think of Don Johnson with a Smith 45 and his ankle gun just blazing away down in South Florida. And I'm like, everything's going to be right with the world. So that's the picture package. I don't remember which picture package this is in the grand series of picture packages. But this might have been the first one with square format with Hasselblad. And I thought that would be an enjoyable story to hear how I landed my $65 prize. And uh, somewhere out there, it's probably still in use. So uh, I hope you found this interesting, and I will be back with more. I hope you enjoyed that. Just remember, when you start editing and sequencing your work into printed materials, that's where this skill set of picture packages, of handling a picture package, or multiple picture packages, and watching how those packages interact with one another, that's where it starts to get interesting and exciting. Editing is an art form. It is a very specific skill that needs practice, and it's not to say that everybody is going to be a great editor. Photographers are known, some as great editors, and some realize they can't edit their own work. So you have to practice. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. Have fun. Go shoot.